Unless you just started playing games recently, then I'm sure you've heard of the controversy surrounding Cyberpunk 2077. This game was highly anticipated, but when it dropped, the game was pretty much broken. I remember watching so many videos of people just slandering the hell out of this game. As a result, I made sure to just avoid playing this entirely. Fast forward to September 2023, with the release of the Phantom Liberty expansion and the 2.1 patch months later, I finally made the decision to give this game a shot. And I'm so glad I waited until the bugs were fixed, because this game was an absolute treat. Fuck's your problem, psycho suit. This look like a landing pad to you. Could have fucking crushed us. Jesus Christ. Okay, no, no, hey, we, we ain't looking for no beef with you. In my opinion, the gameplay is what's going to keep you coming back to this for multiple playthroughs. There is so much content packed within this game, it's all a bit overwhelming at first. Like when I first started up the game, there was prompt after prompt after prompt, all telling you different chunks of information to inform you about some new feature that was a part of the game. If you're one of those people who don't like to read and pay attention, you might be in for a tough time because this game throws a lot at you, early and often. Similar to other first person RPGs like Skyrim, Fallout, etc., you have the ability to completely customize your version of V, the main character. Right from the beginning I was impressed with how detailed the character customization screen was. The sheer amount of options you have at your disposal to make your own version of V was insane. It wasn't just your typical face and body features, but CD Projekt Red went all out, including tons of variations to even the simplest things like hair. And of course, being able to customize your own private area is definitely a funny switch up to how things are normally done. At first, when I was going through the tutorials, I was still skeptical at how this game was really going to play. It felt as the game was a little janky and the enemies moved a bit too fast for you, but as you figure out what works for you and how you like to play the game, everything will just click all of a sudden. You might be a gamer that prefers running and gunning through every level, so you're going to equip submachine guns with lots of ammo so you can do that. On the other hand, you could be into samurai type of games and prefer a lot of close combat, so you use a katana and slice your way through every enemy. Once you decide what build you want to use for your character, this is where the game really opens up. As a fan of RPGs myself, I love mixing and matching different things to see what works and what doesn't. I think that's kind of the beauty of these sorts of games, is finding out what works and then adding that to your existing arsenal to make yourself an absolute tank. As I mentioned a second ago, you can decide how you want to fight the enemies in every encounter, but it goes beyond that. It's not just your approach that you can tailor, it's everything that approach requires. For example, I'm a guy that loves shotguns and being able to blast people away with just one or two shots. So when you open the skill tree, I made sure to upgrade my body perks as much as possible. By doing this, I improved not only my skills with shotguns and blunt weapons, but other important things like health regeneration rate, blocking, fire rate, etc. And what's so great is that everything is made specifically for this type of build so you don't have to worry about wasting points on things you don't want to. Looking at the tree seems like a lot of BS, but as you progress further in the game, you're going to start taking these skills seriously because the difficulty definitely ramps up a bit. What surprised me was how fluid the movement was. I know earlier I mentioned that it was kind of jank, but once you upgrade your stamina and dash abilities, you can start zipping all over the place. Add in enhanced sprinting speed, and it's not hard to avoid enemy attacks altogether. You might not think movement is that important, but when you have a combination of enemies wielding melee weapons and others shooting you from far distances, you're going to want to be constantly moving all over the place. Since the movement was so good, executing the attacks felt satisfying and worthwhile. Like when I reached a certain part of the game where I wanted to use a katana, slicing and dicing up enemies actually felt like I was cutting them up. It didn't feel like I was just mashing them with a sword, but rather hacking them into little pieces. This is the same with other weapons, as when I used the shotgun I could just shoot and move. To sum it up, when you upgrade the movement with the weapons, it creates this fast and frantic gameplay that's very addicting. The combat for this game is so good and there's almost an endless amount of options when it comes to how you get through any level. Stealth is usually an option, but many times it's a matter of which weapons you want to use and how you want to use them. Unlike other titles, every time I entered a gunfight, I automatically locked in. I never got sick of fighting enemies because it was just that fun. Just like other games, you can loot enemies, chests, and other places to gain valuable items. Grabbing everything you can pays huge dividends as you gain components which can be used to upgrade your cyberware abilities or guns that are stronger than what you currently have equipped. There were so many times I had all three inventory slots with good weapons only to kill an enemy and find something better. But wait. There's more. You can upgrade your weapons and add attachments to all of them. I'd be lying if I said I upgraded my weapons often, but it ended up just using iconic weapons that you can find or just swapping them out for stronger guns when I looted them. However you decide to use the weapon system is up to you, but the most important thing is the theme that's present across this entire game. It's your choice, because just about everything in this game really is up to you. 
The world of Cyberpunk takes place mostly in Night City, but you can start outside of it depending on the path you choose at the start of the game. For my playthrough, I chose to be a corpo, and I think it was worth it. Driving through the Night City in my company car made it seem like I was a business person until I wasn't. Even still, Night City is full of life and seems like there's always something going on. The atmosphere of this game makes you feel like you're thrust right into a Blade Runner movie because everything inside the city is futuristic but ruthless at the same time. However, this brings me to my first criticism of the game. Even though the world of cyberpunk is filled with many things to do like gigs, cop events, tons of side missions, I think not having random events is a huge missed opportunity. Similar to the Grand Theft Auto games where you'll be in a certain place and then a random event just happens that thrusts you into a situation you didn't prepare for, this game would have benefited so much from that. Yes, there's twists and turns in the story, but most of those take place during the main missions. Again, I stress that there are times where you'll go somewhere to see people shooting at cops or killing an innocent civilian, but there's no depth with any of those. It would be cool to do something and help someone on the street that you bumped into, only for that person to be a quest giver and then you do some missions for them. The hacking is one mechanic that I didn't use as much as I could've. I played on PS5 so by holding L1 you're able to scan objects and gain information on each of them. In addition you can perform quick hacks which cause different malfunctions to happen to that specific enemy or electronic. These can be as simple as turning off a camera or causing an enemy's cyberware to overheat but all of them serve a purpose in any given situation. The main time I hacked stuff was when I needed to be stealthy, because not dealing with the cameras and lasers made everything a lot easier. However, you can use the hacks during combat, but when I'm shooting enemies, the last thing I was thinking about was trying to hack them too. Although, if you're one of those people that loves to hack, you can upgrade your skill tree path to reflect that choice. By far, one of the coolest mechanics in the game was the ability to romance different characters depending on the gender you chose. If you play as a guy like myself, there's only one person that you should romance. Who that is? That would be Pan Am. If you're watching this video, you may see her and think, so what? She ain't even all that. And man, you couldn't be further from the truth. She's the definition of a ride or die and literally lays down her life for V, on top of having a great personality and stunning looks. During my playthrough, I wasn't even romancing Pan Am as I was with someone else for a large portion of the game. And then when I met Pan Am, I ghosted her immediately. But hey, it's an evil world we live in. What makes this system even better is that just like everything else, your choices matter with your partner as well. There is an entire ending with Pan Am that you can get depending on what choices you make over the course of the story, so you already know that's the ending I got because I love Pan Am. Anyways, having the option to romance a man or woman adds a layer of depth to this game that I didn't know I needed. It makes everything feel even more real than it already does. It adds even more pressure to your already tense situation, because the choices that you make not only affect you, but the person you love as well. Unfortunately, even though this game is in a way better state than before, it's not completely bugless. Although, the bugs I encountered were so few that I didn't capture any footage of them. They weren't anything game breaking, but it dealt with side quests not loading, routes not updating, or objects disappearing in real time. None of these ruined my experience, I was just confused when they happened. I can only imagine how bad this game was when it first released. If you played this when it first dropped, let me know in the comment section below. The gameplay for Cyberpunk is so addicting, but it takes a bit to get the hang of. If you don't invest the time to figure out what works for you, then you're only hurting yourself because this game is crafted specifically with the player in mind. It's designed for you to mix things together to make the version of V that best aligns with how you like to play the game. So if you don't mind a small learning curve, you'll end up enjoying this gameplay for sure. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. Dexter Deshaun in the flesh. Ample indeed. <laughs> Let's roll. The story for Cyberpunk is what I wasn't expecting to be so good. I knew the gameplay would probably be solid, but if you really get into the plot, it's actually amazing. Sure, it's not perfect and there's some things that could be improved regarding how things unfold depending on your choices, but overall it's worth your time. The whole mechanic of choices has been done many times in countless titles, but this time you really feel the weight of each decision. Playing through this requires you to read into characters and their actions, trying to figure out what their true motives are so you can make the best decision possible. Avoiding spoilers, you play as V and are seeking to find a cure that will allow you to remove the biochip in your brain without killing you in the process. But in actuality, it's not nearly that simple. Once you begin to add in the countless relationships that V makes on top of the overall shit show that is Night City, things get muddied up pretty fast. Even still, the journey you go through is full of highs and lows, all which spread out nicely. Another small critique that I have is that there were times when there was just too much talking. Before you say, yeah bro, it's an RPG, there's going to be tons of dialogue. 
I know, I know, but sometimes it felt like it was just a little much. The majority of the time what's being talked about is always important or holds some value, but there were some situations where it's just normal conversation. Depending on how you look at this, this could be good or bad. All this talking just builds up the characters even more, making what happens in the game even more impactful. On the other hand, this dialogue may just bore you. Thankfully, there's a skip function implemented that allows you to fast forward through events you've seen before or dialogue you're just interested in listening to. It's worth noting that there's differences in your dialogue choices depending on who you decided to align yourself with at the start of the game. Since I chose Corpo when I began, some of my dialogue options were specifically for that path. It's set up the same for the other two options as well, with other differences that I won't spoil in case you plan on playing this yourself. However, if you do want to play this, I recommend going the Corpo route. On the surface, it seems the most boring out of the three, but because you're on the inside to start with and then see things from the outside as you progress, it really brings things full circle. It's like since you understand how crooked and corrupt these people are, your choices reflect that, doing everything in your power to never go back to that type of life. With all the different endings, there's a little something for everybody. But in my opinion, the ending called Star is the best ending. I thought it just wrapped things up nicely and made sense. However, if you think one of the other endings is better, then I would understand because it's up to the player and how they perceive the story in regards to deciding how it should end. To my surprise, the DLC expansion Phantom Liberty offers you an additional base game story ending depending on the choices you made. Nonetheless, your enjoyment is dependent upon the choices you make and how well you gel with the overall world of Night City. If you think all the talking is boring and don't get invested with the characters then you're not going to enjoy yourself at all however if you begin to care about certain people in particular groups you may find yourself becoming more invested in the plot than you thought you would be just now i am on board space force one sitting right across from rosalind myers president of the new united states of america the president fuck <laughs> i no you're not joking. Since I didn't play this on release, I couldn't fully comprehend how bad of a state this game was originally in. But when the expansion Phantom Liberty released, the narrative on this game finally began to change. I watched other reviews and videos and the praise that this DLC got was a complete 360 from what was said about the base game. And after playing it myself, I completely understand why. Taking place somewhere in the middle of the main story, you go on a standalone journey involving the president and some new faces, all with the intention of being able to acquire a cure for your biochip. However, things aren't what they seem, and stuff gets crazy real fast. One moment you're escorting the president, then fighting a giant robot, then you're having a drink at a party. This story is full of so many twists and turns, it's incredible. Combine that with the mechanics from the base game, and CD Projekt Red crafted an amazing experience. The whole area of Dogtown feels like the opposite the majority of Night City, as it's dirty, grimy, and full of crime. But all of that just adds to the immersion. Take it a step further and there's a bunch of new side missions added, providing you with even more content outside the base game. Throw in the increased level cap, new weapons, among other aspects, and this expansion could have been its own game. It really is that good. I think it's worth mentioning that with this DLC, there was a lot of fixes to the issues that were plaguing this game. I heard that many of the bugs and textures were fixed, making the game run the way it was intended to, for no extra cost by the way. But regarding the DLC, this expansion is what gamers should expect when paying for additional content. The amount of things to do along with the main story makes this worth every penny. It adds to the world in so many ways and you get attached to the new characters quickly, making the decisions just as hard as they are in the base game. Most of the time with DLC, we receive additional stories story that takes place after the main game, but I thought it was refreshing for something to occur in the middle of it instead. It just added more to V's overall journey. If you were on the fence about buying this expansion, don't be. It's worth the money just for the story, but when you include all the additional features and content, buying this is almost a necessity. Overall, Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that has finally reached its potential. I'm sure that when it first released, CD Projekt Red knew this game wasn't in a state to create the experience they initially envisioned, but now in 2024, I think this game has gotten to that point. The sheer amount of content combined with the storytelling makes this game addicting yet emotional at the same time. If you take the time to get invested in what this game has to offer, you'll be in for a hell of a ride. For those reasons, I'm going to give this game a 9. Outside of some lengthy dialogue, lingering bugs, and missing textures, there isn't much about this game I didn't like. If anything, I think there's still a lot of meat left on the bone. I could make a whole video on things that could be made better, but what's apparent is that the foundation is here. 
All the devs have to do is update and improve what they already established and the next Cyberpunk game could be even better. Since this is designed for multiple playthroughs, I definitely plan on diving back in and trying to plat the game or get one of the other endings. To put it simply, I say this game is worth playing now that it's been fixed and plays as it was originally intended to. If you played Cyberpunk 2077, what did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch one of my other reviews right here.